So the risks of transplantation, we tend to think of uh, those in the short-term risks and the longer-term risks. Uh, the immediate risk uh, can, to an extent, be predetermined by knowing the patient's risk profile. So do they have any other medical conditions which would elevate the risk of the surgical procedure? The surgical procedure, it's, it's very extensive. It's a large operation carried out by a team of uh, about 10 sometimes up to 14 surgeons and anesthesiologists and nurses. The procedure itself, the lung transplant, takes anywhere between about six and 10 hours. Um, so there are the obvious risks uh, associated with the patient getting through the operation and then the immediate post-operative risks. In terms of the operation itself, um, the surgical teams who conduct the transplant are highly experienced in British Columbia. We've done close to 500 lung transplants in the last couple of years. So uh, we do know how to anticipate uh, the best direction to take for every operative procedure for the patient. So the operation itself is a calculated risk um, and we can sort of provide information as to uh, the specific risk for a given individual based on whether they have other health conditions such as diabetes or cardiac disease. Once the patient gets out of the operation, they go to the intensive care unit where they're cared for by a separate team of specialists who are expert at helping patients recover both from the surgery as well as potential complications related to infection or the immediate use of the medications. So once again, we have uh, quite a bit of experience and although there are unpredictable factors, we do know how to anticipate the uh, uh, greatest risk factors coming through and uh, be able to, to manage those. Once the patient gets through the immediate post-operative period, they'll spend about three or four weeks in general, sometimes up to about eight or 10 weeks recovering in the hospital. And during that period of time, they're spending their time allowing their body to heal from the very extensive surgery. They're quite ill coming into the, into the operation in general, so the recovery period is significant. Uh, letting their body adjust to the medications uh, and starting to recondition uh, and do rehabilitation sort of activities with the physiotherapists and the occupational therapists. For patients who have been very deconditioned before the transplant, once all of the acute medical issues uh, have settled down, uh, often we'll work with the physiatry, the rehabilitation team from GF Strong Hospital, which is a partner hospital to Vancouver General. Sometimes patients will go and spend four or six weeks for inpatient rehabilitation in order to get their conditioning up to the point that they're able to uh, look after themselves and manage at home. For patients who do go at home, uh, immediately after the procedure, we do have an outpatient rehabilitation process run by physiotherapy to improve the conditioning. Through all of this process, uh, it's very important that we share educational uh, information with the patients so they can learn about their medications and how to self-manage. And once they're out of the hospital, they're followed very regularly, initially twice a week in the uh, multidisciplinary lung transplant clinic. And then it gradually spreads out to once a week, once a month, then a couple of times a year. In terms of the long-term complications, that once the patients get over the acute uh, impact of the surgery, the most common uh, complications relate either to complications from the medications, which we can deal with by adjusting the medications, Infections, so patients who have had transplants are more susceptible to infections. And we monitor and we train patients and their families how to self-monitor for infection so we can get on top of it early and deal with uh, the infection itself. Rejection is something that people have heard about and they're all very, always very concerned about. In fact, rejection is not an on or off process. Um, rejection is a form of inflammation, so if I had a lung transplant, my immune system would be looking at the new lungs and saying, hey, what are those doing there? It's my job to get rid of those lungs. So my immune system is supposed to do that. So we monitor uh, the immune function for the recipient very carefully with blood tests. We do procedures such as special x-rays and CT scans and occasionally bronchoscopy, so putting a camera into the lung and taking a small biopsy to make sure we're treating uh, immunologically appropriate. If we give too much immunosuppression, then the patients will be more susceptible to infection. If we don't give enough, 
they'll start to have their immune system try and get rid of those lungs. So it's really like being the conductor of an orchestra. We're trying to find the right balance. In the short term, probably in the first year, maybe one out of three of our patients will have some form of rejection. And in general, that's easy for us to deal with. We adjust the types of medications and the dosages, and we're able to get on top of that. So when the word rejection comes up, it doesn't mean that it's all over. It means that we have to change our management approach. So in the, in the long term, uh, probably our biggest problem is related to chronic rejection. It's a process where um, gradually one's immune system is uh, battling to get rid of that foreign tissue. So in that situation, we do have strategies, but in the very long term, probably the most common causes uh, of failure of the organ graft is chronic rejection. In the long term, the other issue we face is as patients do face problems with chronic rejection, we tend to increase the immune types of treatments. Patients get more susceptible to infection, so in the long term, infection would still be one of the other more common side effects we see. In our older uh, patient population range, so I'm really looking at uh, the population older than about 60 years old or so, we see a lot of complications that are related to common sorts of health issues that people over the age of 60 face. So cardiac disease and uh, strokes and these sorts of things which are, are common in that segment of the population even without a transplant. So we monitor very closely for those. Uh, in this day and age, cancer is a very common complication in individuals over the age of 60. And there is, in fact, an increased susceptibility to, to cancer for patients who have had solid organ transplant. The medicines we give to suppress the immune system, in fact, um, do remove some of the body's natural ability to fight off cancers. So there is a slightly increased susceptibility, and we have to monitor very closely for that. Probably the other most important consideration in terms of complications is, is the kidney function. Um, so even if people come into the transplant with excellent kidney function, and we do evaluate for that before the transplant, uh, the major surgery can have an impact on the kidney function. Sometimes the patients do have to have sh a short term of dialysis immediately after the transplant until things settle down. A number of the medications we use after the transplant can negatively affect the kidney function. So although it's, it's rarely a short-term issue, in the longer term, uh, kind of five and ten years out after the transplant, um, kidney dysfunction is, is a common issue. And although about 30% of our patients do have chronic kidney disease, about 5% of them will require some sort of replacement therapy, either a kidney transplant or to go on to dialysis at that point in time.